Hello! Stay a while and listen. It's good to have you here. How are you? I'm happy and I hope you're happy too. I'm Pink Freud, computer scientist that works as a software engineer but also is a master's student in software engineering at the Ecole de Technologie Supérieure in Montreal. I'm also a gender queer person, which means that my gender identity does not fit into what is perceived to be normal, or in other words, I'm not a real man. This is relevant here because we're here to talk about a paper that have, I have been reading called Expressions of Sentiments During Code Reviews, Male versus Female, by Paul Bozu and Sultana, published in 2019 by the I3E. So the researchers were motivated by the fact that I believe it's easy for us all to notice. There are less assigned women than men in the industry of software engineering, similar to what we see in other domains like gaming, construction, mediatic sports, and etc. So starting from this fact, they decided to try and identify how the software engineers express themselves at work. What sentiments can be perceived in the way they talk when they are working? So if men are talking, are they going to act tough and have discussions like real men? Will they be neutral as if talking pure consciousness to pure consciousness? How about when women talk in between them? Do they act as if they are fragile and emotional, neutral, or do they act with sassiness? Uh-huh. But the most important question is how about interactions between men and women? Is there drama, gossip, judgment, power dynamic, privacy invasion, fake friendship, fake politeness? Well, their research found empirical evidence that the industry of software engineering is not a good environment for females. I find it sad that if you are identified as a female, you might not have the same treatment as if you were identified as a male. Feminism is a thing that has been going on for a while, and with good reason. After all, we live in a world that has jokes like it's not that women don't make the same as men when they work as CEO, doctor, and engineer. It's that they choose women's jobs, like female CEO, female doctor, or female engineer. And to me, there is no biological evidence to justify women not being as good as men in software engineering. They might even be better. After all, the first programmer was a woman. And in the beginning, the field was dominated by women. And there were, are countless women that set the foundations of the computer science field. Personally, to me, this is all nonsense because I'm queer and I don't see reality under the social norms that define gender in a binary way. But I can understand it. After all, I was raised an assigned man in a binary society. So there is the way our Western society sees things, which is there is one thing that is sex and also defines your gender. Or in other words, if you have a penis, you should wear a suit and talk like a man. So you are being assigned to be a man. And if you have a vagina, you should wear a dress and talk like a woman, a signed woman. Oh. So what it means is that gender is a social construct and people are assigned the gender and then raised to act a certain way. To me, this is very weird because it just limits what it means to be human. And there's the way I see things, which is I believe describes reality better, which is that there is not only one thing, but four independent things. So if you have a penis, that means that your sex is male. And if you have a vagina, that means your sex is female. It's genetic. This is the first thing of the four, your sex. There are also intersex people who can have female and male characteristics at the same time. But the second thing is your gender identity. So if you think yourself as a man, you're a man, a he. If you think you're of yourself as a woman, you're a woman, a she. This is just how you see yourself, it's not how others see you. Maybe you don't even see yourself as a man or a woman like me. So you can maybe accept being called by either he or she, that's how you identify, or maybe them, gender neutral pronouns. So the third thing is your gender expression or the way you express yourself with your body, like me, the clothes you wear, your hairstyle, your behavior. You can be male and you can think of yourself as a man, but if you have long hair, wear a dress, high heels and earrings, other people will see you as a woman. And finally, there is your sexual orientation. So if you like people with a penis, you are attracted to males. And if you have a penis, people would call you a gay. But if you have a vagina and like people with penises, 
you would be called straight. These notions that are solidified in our society, in this notion of binarism between genders, and it probably comes from the role separation we had in primitive society organizations. This is said in the paper. But they start to dissolve if you perceive reality outside the duality of men and women and start to think out of the box. So you can wear any clothes you want and that doesn't affect your sexual orientation. The notion of these four independent things starts to dissolve under the view that someone is a unique human, a person, not simply a male or a female or a man or a woman. So this is why I am queer, I identify as this. I wear the clothes I want to wear, I talk the way I want to talk, I'm attracted to whom I'm attracted to, and I wish there was no separations between men and women. And people could be themselves, accept themselves for who they are, and society wasn't so complicated in some fundamental things. Like these fundamental taboos, like how we treat each other based on our genitals or the color of our heads. Anyway, I'm peering into a very complex subject that I am no expert in, but I had to, to better understand what this paper was talking about, which is things under the binary view of gender and that male and man is the same thing for the people in the paper, just like female and women are also the same thing in there. The authors of this paper gathered data from 3,070 developers that were active in the development of open source projects. Big projects, two of them, Android and Chromium OS, and smaller projects like Qt, Couchbase, OMAP, Zoom, and Overt. The data the code review comments, so that was taken by them using a data mining tool called Garrett Miner. On software engineering projects, when many people are working together, people write the code and then submit the code for the other contributions, so they can discuss the quality and impact of the code that is being submitted. These discussions can get heated because it's literally one person judging the work of another person, and people can decide to accept or not the submitted code. To me, ideally, people would attack people's ideas, not themselves, but even in this context, sentiments can be expressed. So to measure that, the authors of the paper used a state-of-the-art tool called Senti-SE to analyze the sentiments in what people were writing and classify them as negative, positive, or neutral. The tool also kept track of the frequency of words directly related to sentiments, emotions, or swear words. An example of a neutral comment is saying, hey, this code doesn't satisfy the specifications because of X and Y. A positive one in this example could be, hey, this is some nice code, you're a great programmer, but did you consider X and Y? Maybe you didn't, but if you do, I'm sure you can solve this problem. One negative could be, hey, this is shitty code, it's useless, you should throw it in the garbage, don't program anymore, you're not good at it. Anyway, they separated the people into men and women using a semi-automatized process that would look at their name and even their social network profile pictures with AI to see if they were identified as men or women and then manually review the uncertain and also many certains to be sure that the automatized part of the process did not commit many mistakes. I need to tell you about the data because that's how you can trust these things that I'm saying and it's referring to the data set. So out of the 3,570 developers, 2,633 were men and 937 were women. That's how they were classified. So with the data ready and analyzed, it was used to answer five questions. One, gender versus sentiment. In the code reviews, does gender play a role in, when expressing sentiments in their comments? The answer they got from the data was that men would actually express themselves more than women with their comments. Contrary to the Western culture view that female is the emotional sex. Question 2. Same gender versus cross-gender interaction. Are people more or less expressful when they are interacting with a person from the opposite gender in the binary gender view? Well, the answer they got from the data was that in five of the six projects, women would express more sentiments to other women than to men. And sadly, in three of the six projects, males were harsher to females by not only providing more negative reviews, but also providing less positive encouragements. So the third question is gender versus sentiment word. Does the kinds of words used by the developer change in function of their gender? Or in other words, can they say to someone, hey, that's pretty good. Or you can say, hey, that's fucking good. The meaning is the same, but the strength of the words, pretty and fucking, they are different. 
Well, the answer they got from the data was that the male developers were significantly more likely to use the sentiment words than females. Moreover, during sentiment expressions, females were less likely to use words expressing strong sentiments than males. So question four, the gender versus emojis, emoticons. So emojis are widely used to help people express themselves in informal text. So the question was, does the likelihood of using emojis during the reviews depend on the gender of a developer. From the data, it's interesting to notice that the majority of emojis were smiley faces, followed by sad faces and tongues out emojis to express adrenaline, maybe? <laughs> Different from other research done on this outside of the software engineering context, female developers were less likely to use emojis than males during code reviews. Males. Males. I don't know. <laughs> Question 5. Gender versus swear words. It's pretty simple. The question asked was, is there a correlation between the usage of swear words and the gender of a developer? From the data, the female developers were significantly less likely to use swear words than males in five of the six projects. Even when female used swear words, they avoided certain highly offensive ones that were often used by males. So the, the five answers, the five questions, did you just listen to what I just said? There is verbal violence, violence, towards women in software engineering. Women are half of the population of humans. But this is not everywhere in all the environments of software engineering, luckily. But it's mixed. And clearly there is a toxic environment. Based on gender differences, people create a toxic culture to other humans. That's the conclusion of the paper. According to the paper, these results are different from similar research done in the other domains, and that's contradictory. My interpretation of why the results of the other domains are different is because they are, in fact, different. Environments that are contrary to the software engineering environment, they are welcoming and balanced, or even better, these environments are where gender of se or sex doesn't set the tone of the interactions between humans, especially when they are talking about something so fundamental in our society as work. And from the study, they also saw quiet females in the industry. It makes sense since it's not encouraged in their harsh environment where they are few. And for the women that are there, this environment potentially affects them, their mental health, their self-esteem, self-confidence because they have to constantly be in this pressure state of trying to prove that they belong, that they have their place in there, and that they are good enough. In the industry of software engineering, half the population of the world, the planet, would have to be constantly trying to prove themselves when people that are on the same train as you, supposed to work together with you, won't stop criticizing you and giving you any positive encouragement only negativity. So yeah, what a toxic place. This also matches the evidence present in the data of the research that females often express anger and disgust. From other research about gender differences in work environments, there is also evidence that this kind of environment is less productive than more mixed environments in the workplace. And what I do about this is that I try to engage with others always as if they were humans or people. And from there, I can develop my relationship with the person and maybe treat them differently based on our experiences and not based on our gender or sex. So this is what I had for this video. I thank you very much for the attention. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me. Please share this video. Send it to one person. One human, please. Someone that might appreciate this kind of content. If you did, Thank you. I, I'm, I'm happy if you, if you enjoy this. And I hope to see you again in the future.